kind of like a big thing with this game is when Halo comes out. Will there be a feeling amongst Halo players who've been playing this game? Will they want to go back to Splitgate because of the portal mechanic? Hey folks and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be talking about Splitgate. Now Splitgate is a game that has gone from 400 average players up to 45,000 peak up to 67 1724 all-time peak on steam it's on a variety of platforms and it's really popped off i have a video on my channel which i will link which explains how the game came to be from that 400 player count up to where it is sort of the rise of splitgate and i've also got a lot of reactions on my channel from big streamers and today i wanted to talk to you and be open and honest as always my channel is about I'm a little bit concerned, so I want to sit down and talk to you about the game. Now, I don't want to be a negative Nancy. I want Splitgate to succeed. I think when a new studio comes in with new ideas, they've got a new unique concept. They haven't been tainted by the higher ups in their suits and there's a lot less pressure and they're making the game they want, you know, and it's more fun. That's what we all want. We want video games, not a bunch of guys and women sat around a table thinking how can we make the best product that makes us the most money splitgate strikes me as a game that's fun and it's got a team that is very open and honest and they want to recreate that arena feel now before you click off the video when i say this bear with me and, and hear me out because i want to know your thoughts because i'm well open to having my mind changed because i've kind of got this thing stuck in my head and i hope i'm wrong so here we go about three weeks ago I tweeted that Splitgate was dead and I'd put the GGZ stamp of approval on the game's death. And you might say, what? And hear me out, hear me out, because I want to explain my thoughts and feelings going through it. And you can tell me if I'm right or wrong and we can have a conversation because that's what YouTube is about. It's not about hyping up reactions and all of this. It's about having a conversation with your viewers and the people that watch. It's gone from this game with 400 viewers to uh, 70k peak and everyone's talking about it from Asmongold to Dr. Disrespect to Pokey um, to everyone's talking about it. Right? And, I've, and I've said it's dead. How does that make sense? How, how can that possibly be? When I think about Splitgate, there are two big things going off in my head with alarm bells. Number one is it is an arena shooter. It's an arena shooter and we have seen many, many a great arena shooter come into fruition or exist in the past and what has happened to them, they all don't exist. And the brutal reality is, although Splitgate is fun, it's also a difficult game to master, which is kind of like all arena shooter games. You go in, you play a quake, you use the rail gun, you pick up some armor, you get a quad damage, you get a few kills and you're like, this is pretty fun. You play it for a few hours and you're like, that was so much more enjoyable than playing a, the meat grinder of a, a King of the Hill Gears of War, a ground war, or a search and destroy, or a counter strike where you're waiting for the enemies to respawn after you've died. And you're like, I could get into this. This is so different. You play it for a couple weeks and after two or three weeks, what ends up happening is you're focusing on your aiming, your movement, and the game becomes more of a an aim simulator than it does a video game. That's kind of how these arena shooters work to me. And you can dress it up in any way. We've had games like Diabotical, um, we've had Quake, we've had all these others that end up falling off because ultimately you're just on an arena and there's no side objective such as plant a bomb. There's no get a bounty. There's none of this stuff saying a war zone. And after a while, people have had their fill. They've had their one-on-one -on -one combat, their arena-based combat, and they move on. Now, you can tell me I'm right or wrong, but everything that I've researched and everything I've looked at points to the fact that arena games can't really survive. However, I am totally aware that Splitgate has flipped this on its head because it's an arena game that's combining Halo and Portal, two games that people absolutely love. So it has that ca casual element of jumping through a portal in it, immediately feeling gratifying and fun. And it's free to play, which these games typically aren't. And it's got hype behind it, and it's on all platforms. Can understand how the game could survive. So the question is, does Splitgate have enough of a twist to break that mold? 
Number two for me is the actual gameplay itself. Now, I know everyone's going to say the gameplay is super fun and enjoyable, and I don't know what you're talking about. This is the most fun I've ever had on a video game. I completely get that. I actually had an absolute blast for the first couple of weeks that I played the game. However, after playing it more, it's reminding me of a game that I've just come from called Gears of War. And the reason it's reminding me of that is it has a lot of the same issues and elements that this game also had. The maps. The maps aren't the world's best maps. And that is one of the core things in an arena shooter that your map has to be good. Now, portals do allow you to make a sort of polar map better because you can traverse it in any way you want. So that's a plus for Splitgate. But I don't think the maps are that fantastic. Number two is the game modes. Now, the game modes itself are very, very carbon copy of Halo. And that's fine. But people have played a lot of Halo and people have had their fill. Now, when people have played Infection, sort of an oddball knockoff, a TDM, a SWAT. When you've played all of these for a couple of weeks and you're like, oh yeah, that was like what Halo was like. And you're going to be looking for an actual game mode that Splitgate is created for. You have this game that is all about portals and movement. And yet the core games are game modes from Halo, which were designed with no portal movement. And it's just a bit jarring. Number three, you have the ranking system. We have no proof as of yet that Splitgate can create a working ranking system with even skills. I've been personally placed in top platinum and I don't even think I can play the game in any remote capacity. Now, I'm not saying top platinum's good, but the point I'm making is we don't know how balanced the matchmaking's going to be. We've already seen an issue with people that stack up and win every game because they're in a stack. We don't have solo queue. We don't have duo queue. Yes, we're in beta. Yes, all of these things can be fixed. But what I'm saying is, is by the time these things have been fixed, such as stacking, such as is the ranking system actually going to function? Game modes such as 2v2 just feel empty. There are the execution style game modes where you have to eliminate all the players. And pretty much when you're in a 1v2 or you're outnumbered, it has the same problem with Gears of War execution. You're not really going to be able to clutch it. You just don't have the tools to clutch multiple fights. You don't have a grenade that you can sneak up behind of somebody and burst two people down. You're in a gunfight. And effectively, the way Splitgate works is if you're in a, in a, two, in a 2v1 situation, you can only fire your gun that's it you you can't nade and burst somebody down you can't get an overshield you can't get any tools to outplay you can't gear yourself up you can't pick up quad damage you can't pick up shields and armor and health like other arena games that sort of reward you for controlling the map or at least sneaking around and maybe stealing a piece of equipment so it's very difficult to take 1v2s which means with a stack problem it's going to doubly affect it and if the ranking system isn't perfect, it's going to triply affect it. Especially with the main game mode of competitive being objective based, then it's simply going to come down to the team that team shots the best. And again, it's going to be very, very difficult to take multiple fights without those tools such as grenades, shields and all of this. Our weapons themselves are just a, a win condition. You might say, well, it's an arena game. You have to fight for the weapon, get the weapon, and then you get the reward. I completely understand that. That's what Gears of War is like. All of the weapons are led on the floor. You fight over them and you pick up like the rockets. And then once you've got the rockets, you're in control. However, the type of people that love and consistently play arena shooters aren't the type of people that like that gameplay. They don't want to see somebody with a rocket or a sniper and realistically have absolutely no way to beat them. Now, yes, you could portal behind them, sneak up behind them, but if they're a high level player and they know what they're doing, the, the angles that you can get through looking through portals and covering your back, it's going to be very, very difficult. So like Shroud said in the video that I covered linked somewhere in the description or on screen is it, it's fun for a few hours and then it stops being that fun for most people. Then they'll play it again the next day for a couple of hours and then they'll stop playing it. And eventually after you've done that whole play it for a few hours, come off it, play it for a few hours, come off it you're going to eventually stop wanting to come on the game because there are other games out there like single player games or like Halo. We're not even mentioning the fact that this game, unfortunately, is directly going up against Halo, the free to play game. And I'm not seeing what Splitgate does unique that isn't portals, pretty much. It's basically Halo with portals. Now, maybe Halo players are 
frustrated that once they've experienced the portal movement, they can't live without it and they go back to it. You know how some games just have such satisfying movement and feel that it doesn't really matter if the game's not quite as good. You can't get that. You can't scratch that itch in Halo. So maybe Splitgate survives, but I just don't think it can compete with Halo, if I'm being honest. And I think that its entire identity is a Halo clone with just some portals tagged on. There's more to it than that, and I'm not shitting on the game because it's obviously new in development and it can grow, it can get better. But these are just my concerns. Lastly, what I think happened was when the game launched, there was a lot of server issues. Nobody could get into the game. Everybody was trying to get into the game. It was on Twitter all the time. The game's finally open, you can play it. What this inadvertently did to me is it created this FOMO, this, oh, it's up, it's up for a couple of hours. So, so, so you had these people, these these hundreds of thousands of people trying to get into the game, trying to queue up, trying to get into the game. And eventually people trickled in. They said they played it for those couple of hours. They're like, yo, this is actually really good. I'm going to play it again tomorrow when I can get into the servers. And this accidental throttling of players getting in created this FOMO and created this feeling of, oh, you play it for a couple of hours. It's brilliant. And then the servers go down and oh, I can't wait to do those two hours again. This created a really, really big hype and it kept building and building and building. And then the floodgates finally were opened once the servers were fixed and everybody flooded in and went, wow, this is actually a really good game. But once the floodgates are open and there's very little queuing and you can pick it up and play it whenever you want, that's when we're going to find out if it can survive. That it's no longer a case of, well, I can only play it on Saturday because the servers are open. It's on 24-7. And now you can sit and somebody, if they want, can go and play 10 hours of Splitgate, 15 hours of Splitgate. And then they'll begin to see these problems or lack of problems. Maybe it's perfect for them. But these are my opinions and just thoughts and conversations. Look, there are plenty of YouTubers on there that are going to hype the game up and fake a load of stuff. I get it. Okay, it's exciting. It's fresh and it's good. I get it. And this isn't me just trying to be intentionally negative. What I like to do on this channel is discuss, and I want to discuss what people are feeling about the game. And I'm well within my rights to do that, and I'm absolutely open to having my opinion changed. So obviously, the game used to have 70,000 peak. It's now sitting at 40,000 peak this week, and that means it's lost 42.86% of players. Now, a game is never going to stay at its peak all of the time, otherwise it wouldn't be called a peak. And even losing 42% of players off your peak doesn't mean your game is dead. The problem is I don't see how they stop the rot. I feel like what's going to happen is people are going to grind the battle pass, they'll play it for a little bit, they'll play some oddball, they'll play some competitive, and then they're going to move on. And it'll be a fun experience, but I'm, I'm not sure what keeps people on Splitgate as compared to other games, I'll be honest. So these are just my opinions. And currently they have 23,000 people playing. So that is 67% less people than were at their peak. At the moment, the graph is trending down on Steam charts. And I could be right in my prediction that it's going to die. I hope I'm not. But I really did want to be open and honest and talk about Splitgate in a way that I've not really seen people speak about online. But just the, I'll tell you the reason why it happened and the reason why I made that prediction. I played a 2v2 game and we took the lead 3-0. And we had a couple portals watching all our angles. We had the sniper and we didn't use any ammo so it didn't respawn. Um, and we just sat there and they had to come in towards and funnel and push us and there was not really much they could do. And I just thought to myself, this isn't a very fun experience. This reminds me of like Team Deathmatch and Gears of War with life camping and all of that stuff. And I just thought to myself, it's a cool concept. It just needs some work. And I feel like by the time they've made Splitgate their own, it could be too late. Again, it's Halo meets Portal, which is fantastic. But if your whole entire identity is Halo with just a Portal tagged on, I'm not sure what the game offers long it for a longevity standpoint. Splitgate needs a game mode that utilizes the Portals in a truly unique way. I don't want to play King of the Hill Splitgate. I don't want to play 
domination split gate i want to play split gate with the game mode that utilizes the portals and the maps in the most fun and interesting way because currently it's just meat grinder of all the game modes we've already played but you can get some cool angles with the portal and eventually that kind of wears off for me personally let me know what you think in the comments below have i been too harsh have i not been harsh enough am i right am i wrong what do you think as always, if you enjoy this type of content, subscribe, like, comment. I also have a second channel called The Zone. It'll be linked in the description if you want to see alternate content from me. I'm trying to grow that channel. We've just launched it, so we're desperately trying to grow it. So welcome to anybody that wants to join that. Thanks very much.